Alrighty, hi, it's me, Equals. So I've been messing around with the Fallout 4 power system, which uh, in settlements allows you to conduct power all over and do some pretty cool things with. And I've come up with two circuits that uh, I figured out how to make, and as you can see with the lights, it's how they work. One of them starts with one object being turned on, and each one after it being turned on in sequential order. While the other one starts with all of them turned on, and then each of them turning off in a sequential order. Uh, I have this example with lights, but you can do with anything that's powered, from uh, water purifiers to spotlights. So, so I'm going to show you how to build one of those today. First thing you're going to need is you're going to want your own separate circuit while you're working to make it. Uh, once it is all said and done, you can connect it to your main power grid. But while you're making it, uh, especially with these more complex maneuvers, you really want it on its own separate one. That way, when you program it with a terminal, it won't interrupt other uh, circuits you have going on. So first thing you want to go is you want to go into your workshop, uh, where you want to make sure that you get, like I said, your own circuit of power up and running. As you can see, I have 999 of everything that is from the toggle god mode console command which is invaluable to uh, making uh, some of these more complex circuits because you don't want to go out every time you're doing this and get yourself three nuclear material and 12 aluminum, really. So we have this generating 10 power, which should be enough for our what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get some stuff for our uh, circuit to power. Let's get uh, a spotlight. Takes up two power. Set her down right here. We'll get ourselves a floodlight. And let's get ourselves a light box. So we have three sources of light. And we can simply activate them, of course, by powering them. Just attaching wires. So now that a wire is attached to the spotlight, the spotlight is now working. And, of course, flooding light while it's oscillating like a fan. And we can, of course, power our light box. And it will do a similar thing where it will light up in its designated color for this one, white. And we can even put something in between the circuit and power will still reach it, like this terminal right here. We can throw it down here. Connect it to the power and connect it to our floodlight. Now our floodlight is operating. So, you probably figured this out while you were playing the game, and you might have even gotten a chance to play with the terminals, which, when they are connected to certain things, see, this is connected to the generator, and the generator is connected to the spotlight, so the terminal has control over the spotlight. So we can make the spotlight do some interesting things, like target admin user, which is you. So when you are near the spotlight, the spotlight will follow you. Which I suppose is pretty useful if there's some dark ground around your settlement and you're out patrolling. We can also have it target any enemy user, flood them with light. Once again, if you have a dark settlement, you can immediately target enemies and flood them with light. With a light box, you can cycle colors. And you can even use the terminal to assign a random color. Just by going to your light box control. And asking for a random color. And all connected lights will receive a random color. Purple, for instance. But to make that circuit that these lights over here run on, it's going to be a bit different. First of all, you don't want them connected directly to the generator. 
you want to have an interval switch between them. Head back to the workshop. switch stay on for oh let's say 10 seconds nine seconds I clicked on we'll just pretend I clicked on 10 and you won't tell anyone all right we're back here I'll get 10 this time all right and then we want our switch to stay off for just one second So now it is set, and like I said, we can just break the terminal from the circuit, and it should stay. Everything is on for quite some time, and then when the time is up, they all turn off, and they come back on in a second, but in their sequential order. Now, if you want the terminal to just affect one of your circuits, for instance, you just want to change the interval on this last delayed on switch, you're going to have to connect the terminal just into that delayed on switch circuit. So that delayed on switch will be connected to power and to the terminal, but nothing else. And then you can modify it and it alone. But say you want to modify all three together, you can just connect the terminal to all three of them. So that is the principle of how the lights turn on in sequential order. How they turn off, however, is slightly different. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna get that spotlight by itself, because it 
lights up my work area rather nice, and I don't want it turning off every few seconds. So let's just build ourselves a quick little platform. It's rather dark out, a bit rainy. Alrighty, so we'll just grab our spotlight, put her up there. Connect it directly to our generator and sever its connection with the interval switch. And now I got my perfect little spotlight to see. I need to see when I work. Very nice. Alright, let's get a uh, let's get some light boxes in here and so that this floodlight will be easier to tell the difference then I suppose. So, for this, we won't be needing delayed on switches. Just get rid of those very quickly. We'll be needing delayed off switches. So, the way these work is they will feed power through themselves until a certain interval has progressed, and then their power will be turned off. They can also be found under power connectors. Off switch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just get three, but we're unlike the delayed on switches, they do not need to be connected to each other. In fact, it is rather bad if they are connected in a line the same way you do with a delayed on. Because as soon as the first one in the line turns off, all of them turn off. So one effective method is to have them go individually, each of them turning off at their own time. Or, another method, if you don't have a suitable area to connect your interval switch to, is you can connect them in a row, like the other ones, but the last one in the row must be the first one to turn off. To say again, the last one, like this one over here on the right, turns off, then the one in the middle, then the one on the left, the first one. Because if the first one turns off first, the other two immediately turn off. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you want to get a circuit like my emptying circuit, you can barely see in the distance on those rainbow lights. See how it empties? If you want a circuit like that, you need to make sure that the last one in the circuit turns off first. Unfortunately, when we do that, these need to be set individually so we can't have them connected while we program them so just connect it directly to your terminal and make sure the others connections are severed and we will tell our terminal that we want this switch to turn off at So three seconds after it receives power, three seconds after the light turns green, the light will turn red. But if we want this to go off first, we want it to be the shortest interval compared to its two brothers. So let's set it to one second instead. Once again, the 
last one in the chain is the quickest one to turn off. So we'll have it delay for two seconds. And finally, we'll get the first one in the chain to delay after three seconds. Why to turn on bats? <laughs> Come on, tab out. Not that far out. The controls are still getting to me even after about a week of playing. Come on, target the wire. There we are. Alrighty, so for this last one, like I said, we're going to have it go for three seconds. Reach. Just have it connect to the generator, and the generator will, of course, connect to the terminal. And the terminal will be able to reach our interval counter. Not interval, delay counter. And we'll have it go for our three second interval. order as you can see. Now you can make them last longer by making the delayed off switch last longer and you can make them come back sooner by making the interval switch faster. That's pretty much the gist of it. So that is how you make additive and oh, what's the opposite of additive? additive and emptying circuits as I like to call them. Once they are completely programmed by your terminal, you don't need them to be on their separate circuit anymore. You can connect them to your main power grid, so that's pretty nice. And so, the end result, you get these beautiful little patterns like this. It's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Yeah, thank you for uh, joining me here. And I'm gonna go wait out this rather dreadful storm in my beautiful chair up on top of here. Alright, thanks for joining me.